And new, Ilya Teporia dethrones Alexander Volkanovsky at 3 minutes and 32 seconds into the second round with a devastating combination sending Volkanovsky face first onto the canvas out cold, claiming the featherweight belt and being undefeated at 15 wins and 0 losses. So let's go over what Ilya Teporia did so well to beat arguably the greatest fighter in the world. Let's start off with this fight at the beginning. Volkanovski comes out and immediately it is noticeable that he is throwing many kicks with his lead leg standing in the orthodox stance with his left leg in front of his right leg, throwing kicks to Ilya's body, to his head, and to Ilya's legs. Volkanovsky seems to have this move be both for offense and defense, where when Ilya is attacking him, he will lean back, lift his leg up, slam a kick into Ilya's body to stop his forward momentum, or into his legs, or even into his head. This is actually a very smart game plan that Volkanovski and his team came up with because it simultaneously serves as offense and defense against the aggressive Ilya Teporia. And this was a strategy that was actually working. Many times Volkanovski was getting pressured by Teporia and he was able to simply lift his leg up and throw out a kick to put a lot of distance and meat and bone in between himself and Teporia. However, whenever you do a any kind of move, if you do it enough times, if your opponent is good enough, they will figure out a way to counter that move. Teporia is definitely good enough to come up with counters to the kicks that Alexander Volkanovsky is doing. And we can see here at 407, he tries to counter this kick with a left hand followed up by a right hand. Volkanovsky. Let's take a look at how he defends himself from this attack. This attack misses, but it is the first of many overhand rights that Teporia will launch at Volkanovsky. First off, Volkanovsky has his right hand up high guarding this side of the face, which would intercept Teporia's overhand right. He also has his left hand posted out in front of him to try to keep Teporia off of him and serves to intercept Teporia's overhand right as well. Here we can see Volkanovski using his kicks defensively where he posts on Teporia's head and more lifts his leg up rather than throwing a kick. Volkanovski definitely was targeting Teporia's legs more so than his body or head because Teporia's defense was so good in those areas. And we can see later on in the fight where Teporia decides to play the game of trading leg kicks to see who can damage each other's legs first. High kick from Volkanovski here, just a good high kick super active with his lead leg. Another weapon that Volkanovski was using during this fight was his jab. However, Volkanovski's jab was not as effective as his kicks were because Teporia has extremely good striking defense and slips off to the side of many of his jabs, blocks a lot of his jabs, and we will see later he ends up countering Volkanovski's jabs as well. Another nice kick by Volkanovski. I want to use this section to highlight Volkanovski's footwork in this fight. Volkanovski is famous for his footwork both in switching stances and just how good his movement is. Here we can see Volkanovski using good footwork to skate alongside the edge of the octagon to get away from Ilya's pressure. We can also see that this lateral footwork is not really present when Volkanovski is retreating from strikes and he mostly retreats directly backwards from strikes and will sometimes turn around but he doesn't really exhibit this lateral footwork. Here we have Ilya Teporia at only a minute and a half into the fight already starts to pick up ideas to counter Alexander Volkanovsky's active lead leg. Volkanovsky throws a kick, Teporia blocks it, and then throws a jab slash left hook to Volkanovsky's body. Teporia starts landing leg kicks of his own against Volkanovsky, and unlike Volkanovsky's, Teporia's leg kicks are heavy, and they break Volkanovsky's stance almost every time they connect. We can see this one literally spins Volkanovsky all the way around. We can see it in slow-mo. Ilya Teporia is really good at avoiding Volkanovsky's jab, and in this situation counters Volkanovsky's jab with a jab of his own to Volk's body. Another heavy leg kick from Ilya Teporia 
breaking Volkanovsky's stance, spinning his body around, and just Ilya Teporia not being there for Volkanovsky's jab to connect. Ilya Teporia starts countering Volkanovsky's kicks more often with a jab of his own, connecting nicely on Volkanovsky as the kick is being thrown, sending him stumbling backwards. Here we have Volkanovsky's footwork as he's being attacked, and he's going straight backwards rather than sidestepping to try to avoid being pinned up against the cage. This is something that Ilya Teporia picks up on, and he uses it to slowly herd Volkanovsky up against the cage, where he can land his bigger combinations on the now former champion. Here we can see a combination delivered by Ilya Teporia and Volkanovsky's almost comical response to the attack, where he simply lifts his leg up and almost uses it as a shield while he's trying to escape the pressure that Ilya is putting on him. Ilya comes in with a hand trap where he reaches up with his lead hand and grabs Volkanovsky's rear hand while he throws the overhand right over the top. This is a strike that we know Volkanovsky is susceptible to, getting hit by this exact same strike by Islam Mahachev, where Mahachev landed an overhand right over the top of Volkanovsky's arm. And so we know that Volkanovsky knows Ilya Teporia is very good at this strike, and he does everything in his power to not be hit with that punch. Spoiler note, he is hit with that punch, and it is a fight ending blow. Another heavy leg kick by Ilya Teporia, breaking his stance. And here we have Alexander Volkanovsky landing a nice left hand, and I included this clip to show that there is a big power differential between Ilya Teporia and Volkanovsky, where Ilya will land a strike on Volkanovsky and Alex will be stumbled, have his stance broken, or retreat against the cage, whereas Volkanovsky will land a strike on Teporia and Teporia will simply shake it off like it barely hit him. This hand gets through and it is almost strike for strike the exact same punch that he landed on Islam Mahachev in the first round of their first fight, where he lands a nice left hand through the guard of Islam. More attacks with Volkanovski's lead leg, kicking to the body, Ilya Teporia has very good striking defense and always has an arm in between his body and Volkanovski's leg, just cushioning himself. Teporia has an extremely good jab as part of his boxing repertoire, and I was kind of surprised to see him mostly throw jabs to Volkanovski's body during this fight. And while I don't think they were super important simply based off of how the fight ended, they definitely played a role in giving Volkanovski something else to worry about and causing damage to his body. Another good leg kick from Volkanovski, and again, you can see that power differential where Volkanovski gets a clean impact on Teporia, and really all it does is turn his knee slightly inside, whereas whenever Teporia lands on Volkanovski, Volkanovski's entire body gets twisted by the force of the kick. Another almost defensive use of Volkanovski's lead leg. This is a good example of how Teporia is able to take away Volkanovski's jab by slipping to the outside of it, landing a strike of his own. And through this method of punishing Volkanovski every time he used a relatively small commitment strike, such as a jab or a leg kick or his body kicks that he's been throwing, Ilya Teporia has slowly been taking away the use of those kicks by countering them, leaving Volkanovski with less and less tools that he can use during the fight. This is another example of a power differential. After having seen the power differential in, in the first three minutes and nine seconds of the fight, this kind of phone booth boxing exchange that Volkanovski is participating in with Teporia is not in his best interest. We can see that he doesn't have the accuracy of strikes, and even if he did, his power isn't going to be there, and he's going to lose the power every time. We can go back to the Volkanovski versus Mahachev one fight where Volkanovski decides to engage in a phone booth brawl with his bigger, stronger opponent and gets dropped for his troubles. This is just not a situation that Volkanovski is really good at. Poria does throw that overhand right that we were talking about, which misses. Left hook follow-up also misses and Volkanovski retreats out of the way, even though Teporia is still following him up. And we can see Volkanovski starts using that lateral movement 
as Saporia throws another one of those overhand right punches, which connects pretty cleanly on Volkanovski. However, Volkanovski does get away from the attack. A leg kick from Taporia, where Alexander Volkanovski pulls his leg out of the way and ultimately a misses. Jab from Volkanovski. At a minute and eight seconds left in the round, Taporia throws a giant overhand right, which completely misses. <laughs> You can see Volkanovski's funnily shocked face. Another jab from Volkanovski. Volkanovski really starts landing good leg kicks with about a minute left in round one. Landing a big leg kick that moves Taporia's leg out to the side. And then another one where Taporia tries to jump away from. But ultimately these leg kicks didn't really matter as Volkanovski wasn't able to land enough damage to Taporia's legs to have an impact on Taporia's footwork or fighting style. Here we have Volkanovski landing a nice left hand on Ilya as Ilya is coming in and Ilya just eats it. Again, this is indicative of the power differential between the two of them. We can watch it in slow motion. Left hand lands, clear impact on Ilya, but it just doesn't matter. The two fighters trade leg kicks. Volkanovski pulls away from Taporia's and with about 30 seconds left, Taporia swings with a big left hook. Volkanovski ducks underneath it clinches up with Taporia. This is an aspect of the fight that I thought Volkanovski was going to pull ahead of from Taporia, or at least try to pull ahead where he will clinch up with the Taporia and take him down. Look at Taporia's balance in this situation. Volkanovski has his head underneath his armpit, has one hand around his waist, the other one underneath his leg. It looks like Taporia's leg is in between Volkanovski's, and it looks like he's completely off balance, and yet he jumps his right leg backwards to steady himself and starts fighting the hands immediately, pulling up on Volkanovski's grip on his own body and forcing Volkanovski to elevate his chest where he can pull his hips back. Stellar takedown defense from Taporia. After seeing this little exchange, my faith in Volkanovski's ability to get a takedown against Taporia plummeted. However, that doesn't mean the clinch is useless. Volkanovski took some valuable notes from the Islam fight, both one and two, and used the clinch clinch to land knees to Taporia's body. However, Taporia wasn't going to just stand there and take it, and he lands multiple uppercuts into Alexander Volkanovsky's body, and ultimately he rests his head out of the way of Volkanovsky's knee that he was trying to throw into his face, and they break from the clinch. Volkanovsky tries more jabs. However, Taporia's defense is just too good, and Volkanovski was never really able to get a steady jab going on Taporia. In fact, he got countered a lot of the times when he would throw jabs. Again, this shows Volkanovski's defensive mindset when he's fighting against Taporia, where Taporia faints like he's about to throw an overhand right. Volkanovski, instead of retreating, he just switches his stance, brings his lead leg up, and puts it up in the air, basically saying, don't come any closer. And and when he realizes it's a feint, he just twirls around and resets. Good body kick from Volkanovski here. Those kicks, even though Taporia's defense are, is good, the toes are still getting through. They are still doing damage to Taporia. Again, this game plan might look a little bit silly of just keeping his lead leg up in the air so much, but it did leave him defensively sound, and it was doing damage to Taporia. So I think it was a brilliant game plan. It was just that Taporia had inevitability on his side with the amount of damage he was able to do with just a small amount of leg kicks to Volkanovski's leg. And of course, the amount of power that he has in his hands. Round one ends, Volkanovski's corner tells him that it was a close round, which I agree with. In the end, all three judges gave Volkanovski round one. I would also give Volkanovski round one if I was judging the round. In real time, I gave Volkanovski the first round. However, I saw the success Ilya Taporia was having in cutting off the cage, throwing big shots, causing Volkanovski to be uncomfortable in retreating away from his power shots, and also the large impact that Taporia's leg kicks were having on Volkanovski, and I was starting to get worried. Taporia goes back to his jab, actually countering a leg kick that Volkanovski throws by jabbing his face. Let's take a look at this combination Ilya Taporia throws. He comes 
comes in with an overhand right that Volkanovski sees coming and gets off to the outside of, thus it passes by him. Ilya Teporia is not done, however, and he follows it up with a left hook. Volkanovski also sees that coming, pulls his head to the outside of it. We can see, though, Volkanovski's been retreating steadily backwards, and if this was directly pushing him into the cage, he would have no more space to retreat to, and his overhand right that Ilya had corked might have actually landed. Here we see Volkanovski throwing a jab, Ilya slips to the inside of it and throws an overhand right. Volkanovski sees the strike coming and he pulls away from it, but again, this strike is getting closer and closer, and the less space Volkanovski has to move away from the strikes, the more dangerous they end up being. More good usage of Volkanovski's lead leg attack. Another Another good jab to the body for Ilya Teporia at four minutes left in round two. Here we have Volkanovski throwing what seems to be a leg kick with his right leg. Ilya stops moving and instead goes for a overhand right, which actually connects cleanly on Volkanovski. Volkanovski is stumbled back, left hook of Ilya misses, and Volk is able to escape safety. Here we have another overhand right, left hook combination to another overhand right. Volkanovski is able to clinch up with Ilya here, has his hand on Ilya's neck. Ilya is throwing a left hook. Left hook lands to Volkanovski's body. Volkanovski has this leg in between Ilya and himself, but again, it's not doing much good because he is pinned up against the cage. Ilya throws a right hand and it looks like it connects with the cage and Volkanovski gets in on Ilya's left hook, almost smothering it and clenches up with Ilya. Immediately, both guys start attacking the body, which is something I love to see. Volkanovski with knees, Ilya with hooks. And again, Volkanovski loves to break clinches with knees to his opponent's face. However, Ilya has an arm in between his head and Volk's knee, so he is defending himself and they break out of the clinch. This clinch scenario is extremely important as it is almost shot for shot what happened in the finishing sequence of the fight and I think that it gave Volkanovski some false sense of confidence because in the finishing sequence of the fight he also extends out his left arm to grab Ilya's shoulder and tries to clinch with Ilya but instead of clinching he decides to throw a right hook and that is the beginning of the end. Here we have some combinations that Volkanovski lands on Ilya. This was not a one-sided fight by any means, but ultimately Ilya had the better chin and had more power than Volkanovski. And so all of these exchanges, while not one-sided, were heavily tilted towards Ilya's favor since he could afford to eat more shots than his opponent could. Volkanovski lands a nice right hand over the top. Volkanovski steps in for a leg kick. Ilya Teporia counters it with an overhand right, the exact same combination that he did in round one. Connects pretty clean on Volkanovski, sends him backwards against the cage, chops at Volkanovski's leg himself, jabs Volkanovski's face. His jab, again, is extremely good, whether it is targeted to the body or the head of his opponent. Volkanovski lands a good jab of his own, but again, there is just a power differential here, and we can see Teporia's right there where Volkanovski is stumbled backwards because Teporia's jab also landed. Volk lands a leg kick, another good leg kick by Teporia at 211, and a jab by Teporia where Volkanovski lands a fairly good low kick in response. Here we have Volkanovski stepping in with a big overextended left hand, which just completely misses Teporia as Teporia is stepping to the outside of it. He then tries to follow it up with a right hook where Teporia goes to counter it with a big Big right straight and this is extremely reminiscent of that moment in round two of the first Islam fight where Volkanovski greatly overextends but in this case it's with his right hand and Islam throws with a left straight down the pipe. This is a bad habit Volkanovski has where when he is fighting a defensively sound opponent sometimes he will just step in too far, swing too hard and get countered for it. More jabs from Volkanovski that are just not having the effect due to Teporia's defense being too good. Another jab from Volkanovski. Teporia did what he was doing all night. Slips on the inside of it. Throws an overhand right. Volkanovski is able to pull away from it. Another jab from Volkanovski at 1 minute and 32 seconds left in the round. Ilya Teporia this time slips on the outside of the jab 
And let's move forward. Volkanovsky has his defensive position that he's had all night to defend against his overhand, overhand right from Ilya Taporia. Instead of throwing it up top to try to hit Volkanovsky's head, Taporia this time throws his right, turns it into a hook, landing on Volkanovsky's ribs. He then continues his combination by throwing this left hook that usually goes to the body up top to Volkanovsky's head. Volkanovsky still has his hand up. He's still being defensively sound, even though he's getting battered, being hit to the ribs. This left hook, even though it's partially blocked, still is getting through and now Taporia throws his overhand right again if we go back a few minutes in the fight this overhand right was stuffed and Volkanovsky was able to get the clinch and from there throw knee strikes let's go back to our finishing sequence what is different here Taporia has the overhand right which is stuffed just like it was last time Volkanovsky shells up Taporia gives him space he doesn't continue on in his assault Taporia is nothing if not a patient fighter he gives him space Space to reset and space for him to land his own punches. Look at this. This is what shows Taporia to be an intelligent fighter and not someone who is just swinging wildly to try to hunt for that KO. He goes from this position against Volkanovski, where his punches are being smothered because he is too close to his opponent. He lets his opponent back up, puts his left hand out onto Volkanovski's neck to measure the perfect range for his overhand right. How many times has he done this on the heavy bag, where he posts on the heavy bag with his left hand and then lets it go as he uncorks his favorite knockout punch? Again, he's pressing Volkanovski up against the cage framing on him. Volkanovsky has his left hand reached out onto Poria's neck and because he was able to get this position two minutes ago he's thinking that he's safe. He's thinking that this right arm is smothered. So what does Volkanovsky do? All he needs to do is put both of his hands up, shell up, and roll underneath that right hand of Taporia. Do some lateral footwork to sidestep away from Taporia's pressure and get back into the center of the cage for safety. However, he does not realize that Taporia has perfect set up this overhand right and instead of shelling up and being defensive escaping for safety Volkanovsky's bad habit of loving the phone booth boxing brawl kicks back in and he tries to land his own right hook on Taporia. Of course Taporia is in the much better position to be throwing punches and thus doesn't even get hit by Volkanovsky's right hook. His head slips on the outside of it as he does his overhand right is coming in like a bad out of hell, directly over Volkanovsky's shoulder, connecting clean on his chin, concussing him, and from there, the fight was over. Volkanovsky starts falling immediately. Ilya Taporia, however, knows that the fight isn't over until the referee says it is, lands a left hook on the dome of Volkanovsky, concussing him a second time. Volkanovsky doesn't take any more punches on his way down. However, the referee has not called the fight off, and Taporia starts throwing ground and pound against an unconscious Volkanovsky and finally Herzog steps in and the fight is over. Body, head, head, frame, overhand right, knocked out cold. So in conclusion, how did Ilya Taporia beat Alexander Volkanovsky? He stayed patient. He didn't rush in blindly without a game plan, leaving himself open to be hit like Max Holloway did, Korean Zombie, Brian Ortega, and Yair Rodriguez. Two, he stayed extremely defensively sound, able to avoid a lot of Volkanovsky's jabs, kick to the body and kicks to the head, staying safe for all of those. Three, he started taking away Volkanovsky's long range attacks, such as his, the kicks to the body, the kicks to the leg, and the jabs of Volkanovsky. Slipping on the outside of these strikes and countering them with overhand rights whenever he would throw them. Four, he stayed diligent with his own long range strikes, landing good jabs to Volkanovsky's body and face, and landing leg kicks of his own on Volkanovsky that had a great effect on his stance. Four, he kept heavy pressure on Volkanovsky, pinning him up against the cage anytime he could, forcing his footwork to be only used in one direction and being able to predict that direction. Five, once he had Volkanovsky's long range attacks negated, he had his own long range attacks underway and he was, press and he was pressing Volkanovsky up against the cage. Ilya Taporia has that finishing instinct and power and was able to put the fight away with just one punch punch. Thus, belief in your power is important, being able to finish is important, but you cannot overlook 
all of the steps that Teporia had to take to get to this position to be able to land the knockout blow on Volkanovski. He is not just a one-punch knockout fighter. He is fully fleshed out and has a deep understanding of the game and just beat one of the greatest MMA fighters to ever do it. And he is only getting better. I can't wait to see what's next. Thank you for watching my breakdown. If you like what you see here, please consider giving the video a like, subscribing, and checking out some of my other content. Thanks for watching everyone and have a great day.